I will be speaking today um, about this topic. So can we all say this together? Ready, go. Let us love one another. Yes, something that you hear a lot, love. And I actually had this theme, uh, I had brought this theme of love, how God is love. I even actually chose the same passage before. I, maybe nobody remembers, but First <laughs> um, John chapter 4. Uh, it's actually, I chose the whole passage so we can read through all of them before we talk about anything else. So here it is. Okay. There are about four pages of these. <laughs> Don't worry. We'll take time. I will read one verse. You read one verse. Okay. So I'll start with verse 7. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Your turn. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us the com this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. Amen. 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 And I believe God's word has power. And as we read this, I, I think we already... This is the whole message, you know. <laughs> but anyways, I actually, every time we have musical, I kind of wanted to go through the story of that musical that we are working on. And of course, this time it is Mary Poppins, right? And uh, I know a few, I mean, not few, some of us are doing enrichment programs. So you might know who Mary Poppins is kind of, you know, because we talked about it a lot, but you might not know the story. Even the ones who are doing musical, you might be just singing the songs that you're singing. So you might not know the whole theme of the story or what is the important part or whatever. So I just wanted to, of course, I'm not gonna tell like 30 minute summary, but I'll try to go quick with it. And most of you can just help us because you know it very well by now, right? So what happens? In short, Mary Poppins comes to Cherry Tree Lane. What is Cherry Tree Lane? It's a, it's a place where Banks family live, right? Um, and she's, as you can see, she's magical. <laughs> this lady, Mary Poppins, is a magical figure, huh? She's, of course, not a real person. I mean, she's a real person in the story, but um, she's kind of like a superhero in a way, right? She just appears, she flies. Uh, I don't think we can have piano wire for our musical, but <laughs> yeah. But anyways, she's a person like this, right? And she comes because why? Why does she come? Because Jane and Michael Banks, are the children in this family um, of uh, George and Winifred Banks. And they actually are, let's go back to, yes. Uh, they are the children that need a nanny. 
And nanny is in Korean we call yumo. I don't think these days people have yumo in the house, but anyways, it's a person who's kind of like a tutor, but at the same time a caregiver, like babysitter, you know, uh, doing a mother's job in the house because mom is so busy, I guess. So they were looking for a nanny to help them grow well. Um, and actually, these kids, actually, as you guys know, are they, un are they nice children? No. Not really. We can use the word naughty because they are very disobedient. <laughs> they are very um, just disrespectful, I guess we can say, right? They don't care what the parents say or what the teachers or nannies say. So the last uh, nanny right before Mary Poppins, who is who? Rina, what's her name? Katie Nana, she's like, I'm done with this. You know, I don't like these children anymore and I will just go away. And then that's how they ended up having a new nanny. And they were actually writing an advertisement, you know, I want this kind of nanny. And all of a sudden, this nanny appears. Da -da -da. And that is Mary Poppins, right? But do you think um, George and Winifred Banks, uh, are they really wanting a nanny? What do you think? Maybe, maybe not. Well, we can think about how George grew up with this nanny. <laughs> What's her name? Miss Andrew. Yeah, this is a nanny that actually uh, let George grow, grow up with, right? So this, do you think this is a nice nanny? No. Not really. As you can see from the picture, she's almost like a witch. <laughs> and she's holding this big thing, which is medicine, right? And, and she would just feed medicine to the kids if they don't listen. So it's kind of like punishment. <laughs> and she says, if you have this medicine, you will be fine. <laughs> and it's so bitter, ah, but they just have to take it or else they will, you know, they have to listen. And that's how George grew up, right? George Banks. And later on, you find in the story, who else had this person as his nanny? Chairman, Chairman yeah, Chairman says, ah. <laughs> Did, did you know Kayla? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so then, um, this lady is somebody who they think is the best nanny because she was very strict and, you know, she was good at making sure that children will listen, right? But do you think that's a good nanny or a good person to raise children? Like, giving them fear? We just read God's word which, which said love isn't fear, right? You wouldn't give... I'll scare you so you can listen. That is not the love we we're talking about, right? Um, anyways, so that's how the story goes, right? They get the new nanny, Mary Poppins, and they go through many different adventure and magic. And they eventually end up being a happy family. <laughs> oh, that was very short, huh? <laughs> I mean, there are many things that's happening in the story. I can't tell you all that, all of that. For enrichment students, you can come to Musical Performance Day. <laughs> so you can find out more about the details of the story. But there are many fun songs, beautiful songs, magical songs, and dances that we do, right? Musical students, right? That actually, through those songs and through those stories and, and the relationship, actually, they weren't happy family because kids really wanted daddy and nanny's, I mean, daddy and mom's care, but daddy was so busy, mom was busy, the new nanny came, and they thought she's the same nanny, but she was actually different. And later on, they learn to love their parents and parents to love their children. So they end up being happy family. So, well, what is this story then trying to tell us? We want to talk about that, yeah? There, there might be many things that this story is trying to tell us, but out of all of that, maybe I would think they really want to talk, uh, talk to us about family. What is family? Because yeah. I think this story, was, you know, uh, this story was written pretty long time ago. And this movie and, and the musicals were made um, in 19, early 19, right? And the story is actually based on, not, uh, musical is not made then, uh, it's later on, but the story is based on 1910, England. And I'm sure that's the time when the families had the similar structure where daddy had to really be busy, right? They're busy earning money. That's my goal. That's my job as a father. And mom's uh, responsibility is not children, but being busy with social life. And actually, George says, 
you know, ye shall be judged by your friends, which makes no sense, but that's what they were thinking, right? Your social life, how you do outside, how, what kind of friends you have will decide who you are kind of thing. Maybe we still have that kind of notion in this world right now, right? You feel like, oh, if I'm with rich friends or very smart friends who go to Harvard and Yale, I will be also smart. I will be evaluated as a smart person or something, I don't know. But anyways, that's kind of a background that they had. So the mom, if you remember what the mom says, she invited everybody. Is Winifred here today? Yeah, yeah. Is she happy with this life that she's living? Not really, huh? And, and she actually says, she actually invited a lot of people, but Mrs. Brill, do they come? No, and she's sorry for it. And, and actually, when she was trying to invite friends to her party, she knows that they're not her friends. Winifred was like, oh, but they're not my friends. But that's what they were trying to do, right? Even though they're not her friends because she wanted to be judged as a right person or a good person, she was like inviting all these friends and it didn't work out. So there were some hard feelings there, right? Um, so mom and dad just busy with all these things. Then who, who's taking care of these children? Again, nanny. But this whole story is talking about, is that really right? Or is that really what we have to do as a family, right? And then in the story, you know, George, uh, no, no, Michael, Michael, where's Michael? My, my Michael, yes, Michael. Uh, what does he say about like when, um, I think, I mean, there are many things he said, but about his father, does he like his father? Well, no, but at the same time, I guess, yes, it's kind of like in the middle. Do you, think, do you think he wants to be with his father? To spend time with his father? Do what? Fly a kite. Fly a kite, yes, let's go fly a kite. That's what actually he really wanted to do. But dad says, I have no time, I'm so busy. George, you're too busy, okay. And, and um, this story kind of goes on to say, you know, children can also take care of or love their parents. You don't have to wait and just say, why aren't my parents loving me? But let's actually go on and do something for our parents. It's not like they do something, but so then they visit where? Who's going to tell me? Uh, Van Hustler. Where do they visit? Uh, Michael and George, uh, uh, Jane Banks with, with um, Mary Poppins. Yes, okay, our uh, messenger. Bank, yes, <laughs> precision and order. Yes, they're all working and very busy and Michael and uh, Jane Banks, they visit their father's work, which is never allowed. And George is very angry, what, why are you here? But through, who, who uh, uh, I actually have the next page, right? Through George Banks is actually learning, actually George Banks is learning through this experience of having his, her, uh, his children in the bank, um, there's John Northbrook. What does John Northbrook do? Um, our John Northbrook. What do you say? Oh. <laughs> no, no man should ever be too busy. Oh, that's the line that he has. So actually he says, if you heard, no man should be too busy to have no time for his children, right? So he's saying people are more important than money. Because that's what George is trying to find out. You know, I have to decide. There's Von Hustler. I will make more money with your money, you know. Let me get the money from your bank. And then George is like, I'm not sure. And then John Northwood comes. You know, what is more important is people. And I can make this happen with the people that I care, right? And then actually later on, George falls into trouble because uh, he thinks that because he, oh, he actually decides to let John Northbrook get the money from bank. Yeah? He, we say in uh, Korean, 투자하다. What's the word for that in English? Invest. Invest, that's the word, yes. And then he did that to John Northbrook, but then from outside, it doesn't really seem like he's going to do something very well with money. But then it turns out that actually John Northbrook makes lots of profit. So that ma makes George also making a lot of profit for his work. And then chairman comes and says, good job, right? So that's the end of the story. You know, George is so happy. You know, he learns that money isn't the most important thing. Of course, money is important. It's not like money is not necessary. But that's not the main thing that we live for, right? People, family. That's what this story is kind of trying to get to. And then actually at the end of the song, finale song, the title is called Yes, anything can 
and happen. Yes. And then it says, if you let it, it says, reach for the heavens and you will get the stars thrown in. That's all the lyrics that we're singing, right? And it's kind of talking about how you should dream on together, right? Work together, love each other. This is a family that you should love. You don't need another person to come in to take care of your family, but it's your family that should love each other and that should take care of each other and understand, right? So, I mean, it's a good story, good story, very good. We have many of these stories that we did a musical on and they are all giving good lessons, but but is that story, does Mary Poppins know Jesus? <laughs> I mean, of course, it doesn't mean that we have to do musical because they talk about Jesus. Of course not. That's why we did a lot of Disney musicals, which isn't really Christian. And I talked about this before too. Uh, then are we doing something wrong because we're not talking about Jesus? No, 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 that's not what I'm trying to say. But um, what I'm trying to say is from this musical, we're learning many of these themes and the lessons, but we have to go deeper as Christians, right? As Christian school. We come here and we are in Christian school because we profess our faith in Jesus Christ, which is our, not Mary Poppins, but which is our real God, real living God, right? And again, the verses that you read with me, it says, dear friends, let us love one another because love comes from God. Even the love that we learn from Mary Poppins' story, the family love or the, or the companionship, this is all actually from God, right? The love that we talk about every day, maybe the movies you watch, uh, dramas, K-dramas you watch, or K-pop songs that sing about, all the love that we talk about, it's originally from God. He is love, right? And that's why we come here, because we believe that He is the God of love. And it is not through magic that God was working. It is actually real power that he has, right? But it's not only something very magical and bright. And it's not only that, but he works through the sacrifice, the real sacrifice of love, which is Jesus Christ, right? And he's the savior. He's the savior. He might not be Mary Poppins. He might not be like shiny and pretty, but he's the God of love. And he is the one who died for us. And that is the love that we want to talk about. That is the love that we want to show through the musical, even though it's not really talking about Jesus. I worship Jesus. It doesn't do that. But through your action, through your eye, how do you say, it we say in Korean. <laughs> through your eyes, through your everything that you do, you are professing, I am Christian. I am the love of Jesus. I love Jesus. Right? So that's what we want to do. We want to just remember um, that we should love one another. Through the whole thing that we're doing as uh, students here, uh, not only musical students, enrichment students as well. You are studying hard to love. You know, Actually, all of the theme and the goal that we have is love. And we want to make sure that we love one another not only in your families we can also remember that right so you think about your parents who are busy i'm sure they're very busy but they're loving you too to send you here right so let's think about the family that we have and also the friends that you have right the teachers that you have here let's think about each other and let us love one another okay so let's pray and finish our